it's been uh, wonderful to listen to so many great people. And I, I want to thank uh, Michael, you, for your time this morning and, uh, and your patience with me. And I want you to know that one of the things that's extremely important to me is fairness. And I think I shared with Michael this morning during our brief two-hour meeting. <laughs> Michael's a uh, tenacious man, and I love him for that. That um, I, don't, I usually don't get angry. Um, you know, there are things that some people are uh, given from their parents and gifts. And the one I was given, the many, rather, one of the many I was given from my mom and dad was patience. And uh, I hope kindness and empathy and understanding. That's more than one, isn't it? I've been here a while. But at any rate, it's, uh, I think, important to get to know each other uh, maybe better than we had before. Um, this is my first convention. <laughs> my first Democratic convention. <laughs> State Democratic Convention. I was actually at the national one, but that was a lot of fun. But at any rate, um, I think that uh, the only two things that really bring me close to anger, not exactly anger, more frustration, are unfairness and arrogance. And, you know, when you see people treated unfairly by another human being, it's troubling. Why don't you answer it? Go ahead. <laughs> Although I like the sound of the bird. What kind of bird is that? It's a whistle. It's a whistle. It's not a bird. I take a picture and I can't get rid of it. <laughs> Technology is wonderful and frustrating all at the same time. But, um, you know, whether you're African American, uh, whether you are gay or straight, whether you are from some other country, uh, and whether the issue is education, or immigration, uh, or the environment, or the fundamental fairness of human beings, and where you come from, and what you believe in, and who you love. Fundamental fairness would dictate that all of us are treated equally. All of us. We are all children of God. And the president said it, I think, uh, better than I've heard anybody say it. Not last spring, but I think it was the spring before. I believe it was interviewed, uh, Michael, wasn't it? Robin Roberts? Is that right? Yeah. A very moving interview, discussing his own evolution on marriage issues, gay marriage issues. And when I saw that interview and I listened to what he had to say, you could see his heart, Darren. And it moved me. And I'm sure it moved you. I'll never forget, you know, it was enormous news. I, I think uh, the vice president kind of let it leak out a little bit the week before. <laughs> but, you know, Joe goes on. And I love him for it. He's very straightforward that way. But on the following Sunday after the president did this interview and said, you know, I've always supported uh, things that are important and that are important to everybody and uh, but I never had quite gotten to the place where I supported a gay marriage, but I'm there. I'm there. And I got there a while ago. But be that as it may, I, I think it's important to understand who we are, what we believe in, what we care about, and what matters. And what matters is that we're all treated fairly. What matters is that we're, we realize we're all in this together. What matters is what's past is past. Let it go. We all have to let it go. You know, uh, there are three moments in time. Uh, there's the past, Sally, and it is gone. And then there is the present. And the present is here. The present is something that we can deal with, but it's hard to change the present because it's happening in real time right now. 
You know, as soon as these words leave my mouth, they become the past, like that. So we have the past, the present, but then we have the future. The future we can change. The future we can make a difference in. Because it hasn't happened yet, and we can have an opportunity to maybe have a small hand in molding it and making it better. When I go to sleep at night, I pray every night. And I pray to God, I, I thank Him. I thank Him for everything He's done for me and my family, and for people I care about, which is you. God just made me this way. I love people. And I ask Him to make the world a better place in which to live. And He's doing that. He's really done that a lot for you in the past year and a half. It is absolutely, Nancy, remarkable to see how society is moving very quickly on, on being more understanding and more tolerant and more accepting. And it's a beautiful thing to live in and witness. Uh, you know, Congressman Grayson earlier was talking about uh, Oliver Wilde. Oscar Wilde, excuse me. I make mistakes. <laughs> Forgive me. And um, he talked about how difficult it was for him to live in his time. And I'm sure he would be amazed if he were alive today to see what's happening in our world and how better it has gone. So for those of us that take a little while, please forgive us. Please forgive me for not getting where I am now sooner. But I'm better. <laughs> and I'm you know, it's all, I'm almost done, Sally, I promise, for those of you who have to get the bus. If you have, I think the bus is gone. That's a pass. There's another bus in 15 minutes. God is good. Um, so real, real quickly, you know, these things are not complicated. It really isn't complicated. It's just a matter of listening to each other and understanding one another and realizing that there's a very basic rule that really tells us and teaches us what we need to do. It's, it's such an important rule to us, we've given it a name. And it's called, do unto others as you would have done to you. We call it the golden rule. Well, there's a reason, and, and because it's very simple, and it's uh, very straightforward, and, and it's easy to, uh, to remember. Right, Nancy? So that's all we have to do. And all this stuff that's going on in Washington or Tallahassee, we can fix it. Because we have a future opportunity that's coming, and it's coming fast. And so if you're, you know, if you're gay or straight, if you're transsexual, if you're a lesbian, if you're bisexual, if you're African American, if you're elderly and frail, if, uh, if you have difficulties getting health care, if there are problems that you're facing, we good? Okay, great. Then we have an opportunity to change it and to fix it. I love Florida. I love her with all my heart. Almost as much as I love my Carol. Christmas Carol, I call her. <laughs> but what breaks my heart is what I have seen over the past three years from the administration in Tallahassee yeah. with education. Mm -hmm. You know, you come in and your first act is to whack it $1.3 billion. And then follow that incredible act up with the second go-round in the second session where you whack higher ed, $300 million. And then you have the gall to go to the education community, Sally, and, and teachers. I have three sisters. Two of them have been public school teachers here in Florida. And, and say, you know what? Maybe I can just give them $2,500. That'll take care of it. Now forget it. Well, I got news for you, buddy. 
teachers are smart and they cannot be bought. That's right. That's right. Right? Look at the environment. What is he doing to our environment? Ruining it. I mean, if you've been down near Lake Okeechobee lately and seen the Caloosahatchee River and the St. Lucie River on the other side, they're kind of emptying the toilet into those two rivers. It's unbelievable what's spewing out of there. Now, I understand they've slowed it down a little bit on the east side, but that's not good. It's a mess. Anybody seen the movie The Candidate? It's kind of a comedy. There's a line in there where the one guy is saying that he was going to run for office, and I think he was running for Congress there in the movie, and he says something like, you know, if you elect me to Congress, I'll take a broom, because it's a mess. <laughs> you know, there's some messes we got to clean up. But I'm confident we can do it. And talk about ethics. And this guy? Please, don't even get me started. Well, maybe we'll start next Monday. But maybe. <laughs> we'll see. It's coming. It's coming. And I'm about to wrap up, Sally. I, I feel you. I feel you coming closer. Huh? All right, thank you. You're, you're very patient. Yes, I am. I was, I was built to last. Um, anyway, you, you know it all. You know it all better than me. We got a lot to do, we got a lot to fix, and we got to do it. We have a duty. We have a duty to do what's right and to stand up for the people again. When I served as governor before, I, I tried to be the people's governor every day. To think about, you know, how does this affect Joanne? How does this affect Rob? How does this affect Susie? How does this affect Paul? How does this affect Michael? It matters. And you have to have somebody in a position of authority who thinks about you who thinks about you first, and the kids in our schools, and what they're having to deal with, and how are you gonna improve the economy and create jobs? We hear a lot about jobs, 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 all that you know, nice rhetoric. The best way to create an opportunity for good jobs is not to whack education, it's to protect it, and honor these teachers, and not demoralize them. They are demoralized. I talk to them every day. I see them at the Publix. I walk with them at the CVS. You know, the, the 7-Eleven. I go around Florida and just walk around. You know, little citizen Chris. God gave me two ears and one mouth. And Sally, I try to respect his ratio. <laughs> if you listen, and I listened today for an hour, right there on the floor, it was joyful. Oh, was it over? Whatever. It, it, it was helpful to me to hear people like Scott and all of his speak. You know, you learn a lot more when you listen than when you yap. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the yap shut and you'll learn a lot. And to be a good leader, a good servant, you have to be a good listener. You don't just go out and pontificate and tell people what to do and act like you've got all this power and authority and, and expect people to just do what you say because you're governor or whatever it is. That's not the way to lead. The way to lead is to listen and to learn and to have empathy and understand what people need. And it's coming. I'll wrap up by telling you that uh, I would be honored if you could come to my hometown of St. Petersburg next Monday. Actually, if I were you, I would come Sunday <laughs> because we're going to start at about 7 a.m. on Monday, November the 4th. And we'll have a talk with our fellow Floridians about our future and about fighting for people, all people. Everybody's included, nobody's left out. This is about a people-driven effort to make sure we get Florida back on track. I'll be there. I'll be there. Please come, because it's coming. God bless you, God bless Florida. Thank you for being here.